In this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you step by step through five super actionable ways that you can mine your competitors for high value keyword opportunities across the top, middle and bottom of the funnel. Now, using these tactics alone, you'll emerge with dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of new keyword opportunities that you can use to drive targeted traffic to your business or your clients. Hey, it's Robbie Richards here from RobbieRichards.com, the blog where I share actionable SEO case studies and tutorials designed to help your business get more targeted traffic from search. Now, if you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button below and all the references and links included in this video will be in the description box below. So let's jump in. Okay, I'm gonna be working through several working examples in this training, just to give you an idea about how you can apply it to different types of businesses. And I'll be using SEMrush throughout the training. If you don't have an account, you can use the link below this video to grab a free 30-day trial, get full access, and follow along step by step. And the first strategy that we're gonna look at is how to use subfolder analysis to mine high intent keyword opportunities from your competitors. And the reason that we do this is because not all keyword types are created equal. Certain types of intent map better to different business or site monetization models. For example, if your site is monetized primarily by AdSense revenue, you're likely gonna to wanna to prioritize high volume, top funnel informational keywords or topics that have the potential to drive more eyeballs and clicks to your ads. Now, if you run a site monetized primarily by affiliate revenue, you'll likely prioritize mid-funnel investigational keywords or topics that people may be researching right before the point of purchase. And if you run a site monetized primarily by e-commerce sales, then you'll likely prioritize transactional or investigational intent topics that will lead people directly to the purchase. And to illustrate this subfolder analysis approach, we're gonna pretend that we're trying to find some commercial intent keyword ideas for our new Beard Products e-commerce store. So if I grab one of my competitors, in this case, Beard Brand, and go over to their website, what I wanna do is quickly look and see if they're housing their products in any type of subfolder or subdomain. So I can see here that they're housing all of their products under, conveniently, this products subfolder. So we've got Beard Oil, and then they've got all of their beard wash products. So now knowing that I can come back over into the SEMrush SEO toolkit organic research report here, drop in their domain and I'll quickly see that they're ranking for over 40,000 different keywords, bringing in several hundred thousand organic monthly visitors. So now what I need to do is click on this positions tab and you'll quickly see here, I've got some filters in place that allowed me to bring down the position count here from 40,000 down to 319 keywords. So what I did specifically is I set a position filter to only show the keywords that this site was ranking in the top 20 positions and this helped me boost the relevancy of the results that I was bringing back. And then I added some other advanced filters on here to trim in a little bit more too. And most notably, and the most important one is setting a include URL containing, and then we wanted to include that products subfolder string. So we're only looking at the commercial intent keyword opportunities that are housed inside of that products category. And then finally, I included a word count greater than one just to bring in any queries that have at least two terms inside of it. And once I apply that, now I'm left with all of these keywords that have some sort of commercial intent or could potentially be a product category on my new Beard Products e-commerce store. And you can see again in the URL column, the results only from that Beard Products subfolder. So what I would do now is I would go through and just start checking any potential ones that I might wanna target on my site and then come up and add them to my keyword manager up here. Now, similarly, if I'm only interested in the informational keywords that I wanna target with my new Beard product store, what I would do is come up and you can see here with Beard Brand, they're housing all of their informational blog content inside this blog's Urban Beardsman subfolder. So similarly, I just come back into SEMrush now and I can come into the positions report, layer on a top 20 filter again. And in this case, I'll come over and I'll say, only include results from the URL containing blogs. And because I wanna go a little bit longer tail, I'll say I'm only interested in queries that have at least three terms in it. So word count greater than two. And you can set this higher if you wanna trim the results down a little bit more as well. More longer tail, typically gonna be a little less competitive. So you can see now I've got almost 11,000 informational keyword opportunities that I could be targeting on my blog. And I scroll down just like before, I'll just check any that look like they could be good ones to go after, and then simply add those again to my keyword manager and move on. And as another example, let's just pretend that you have an affiliate website where you're promoting different coffee products. So I might come over to a site like Wirecutter and come into their kitchen and dining category. And when I click on one of their posts, I quickly notice that all of their best of type posts are housed under this review subfolder. So similarly, I'll come back over now to SEMrush, come into their organic research report, and I can see that the Wirecutter is ranking for over 2.7 million keywords and bringing in over 5 million monthly organic visitors. Now I come over into the positions tab here and you're quickly 
actually see that I was able to use a series of filters to trim that keyword set down from several million down to 2,300 targeted keyword opportunities. And if you have a look at the filters that I set, you'll notice that I included the URL containing only the review subfolder, since that's where they were housing all of that best of type content. I included word count greater than two. Again, you can up this higher if you wanna streamline your keyword list and the number of opportunities present. And then I included keywords containing the best modifier as well as the coffee modifier, since I'm only interested in their affiliate based content where they have best of type articles related specifically to coffee products. Now you can see here, I've got loads of good opportunities that I could now go after, really targeted best coffee bean grinder, best coffee maker, best budget coffee maker, best burr coffee grinder, not sure what that is, but these are all great opportunities that I can look at and potentially start targeting on my website. So just like you did before, add these opportunities to your keyword manager, repeat the process for three to five other competitors, and you'll be off to the races with a solid list of new opportunities to target on your website. Okay, the second strategy that we want to look at is analyzing your competitors top traffic generating pages. And the reason that we do this is because search volume is really only a directional cue, right? With other things now coming into the search results like featured snippets, ads, and other SERP elements, these really drastically impact click-through rate. And ultimately search volume just shouldn't be the be all end all metric when it comes to prioritizing the keywords you go after. Instead, you wanna get a sense of which URLs in specific high value categories of a site are driving the most traffic and use that to start prioritizing which opportunities you explore. So for example, if I come back over here into SEMrush and I want to see which specific product categories are driving the most traffic to Beard Brand site each month, I would just come into the SEO toolkit, organic research, and then navigate to this pages report here. And so I can quickly see 850 pages that are driving traffic from search to Beard Brand's website. Now, what I need to do is add on a few advanced filters so that we can drill into only those commercial intent product pages that are driving traffic to the site. So I'll just come over and set some advanced filters. And you can see here, I've got include URL containing products, since that's where all of the products are housed on the website. And then I'll include traffic greater than 100. So I'm specifically interested in in those product or commercial intent pages that are actually driving a decent amount of traffic to the site each month. You can see that I've whittled that down from 854 all the way down to 11. And I can see their product categories related to things like beard oil, beard softener, sea salt spray, beard wash, utility balm, beard grooming kits, etc. So this might be the first smaller set of commercial intent keyword opportunities that I start to qualify and look at including into the structure of my new e-commerce beard product site. Okay, so the third strategy we're gonna look at is performing a keyword gap analysis. And this is where we're identifying all those keywords that your competitors are ranking for and getting traffic from that you currently are not. And this is just a really quick way to find important content gaps across each stage of your funnel. So for a quick example here, if we come over to the Beardaholic website, you're gonna notice up the top here that they have all of their products housed under this shop.beardaholic.com subdomain. So what I do in this case to identify any potential commercial intent keyword gaps against say a site like Beard Brand is I'll come over into the SEMrush keyword gap analysis tool here. And then what I do is I enter in, first of all, my domain, which is in this case, the shop.beardaholic.com subdomain. And then I would enter at least one of my competitors. So in this case, Beard Brand, we're comparing any keyword gaps against the Beardaholic shop subdomain and the Beard Brand product subfolder. And then I'll make sure that I have my organic keywords set as the keyword type I wanna look at. And then I'll just click compare. And now what I do is I set a couple additional filters on top of this. I go, I'm only interested in looking at where my competitors are ranking in the top 20 positions as this just generally helps deliver more relevant results. And then I set a minimum volume threshold. So I'll start off with say a hundred. So now we're looking at all those commercial intent keyword gaps that have at least 100 monthly searches. And then all you need to do now is scroll down to the bottom and have a look at this report, come over and click the missing keywords tab, as these are gonna be the keywords for which your domain doesn't have rankings, but your competitors do. And you can see here instantly, I have 62 opportunities that have commercial intent and at least 100 monthly search volume. And these are the keywords, again, that Beard Brand are ranking in the top 20 positions for that Beardaholic currently is not. And now I can just go through and check any of these product category related terms that I might wanna target on my website and add them into my keyword manager. Now, similarly, let's just say now that Beardaholic has looked at all of their commercial intent keyword gaps and they wanna now go a little bit higher in the funnel and look at any informational topics that they could use to drive more eyeballs to their brand. And then inside that content, drive people into their online store. Similar process, I just come into the keyword gap analysis tool again. And this time I just enter their main Beardaholic domain. And then I enter in Beard Brand's blog subfolder since that's where they house 
all of their informational intent. Make sure I've got organic keywords set. Again, I set my competitor has to be ranking in the top 20 positions. And then for this one, since these informa informational topics tend to have a bit more search volume, I'll set that minimum threshold at say 300 monthly searches. Click the missing tab. I've got a long list of new keyword gaps that I can explore. In this case, 316. And these ones are all informational intent topics that Beard Brand is ranking for that Beardaholic is currently missing. So you can start at the most valuable high intent keyword opportunities or keyword gaps, and then just move your way up and down the funnel, depending on your site's monetization model. Another way to find high value keyword targets is to check which keywords your competitors are bidding on that you currently don't have any organic rankings for. And it's really easy to unearth these opportunities by using SEMrush's keyword gap analysis tool. And as you'll see here for, let's just say I have a site called Traffic Safety Store, and I'm looking for new commercial intent keyword ideas. Now, I know that my competitor, Traffic Safety Warehouse, is running ads. So I want to see which keywords they're currently bidding on that I don't currently have any rankings for. So all I would do in this case is I would enter in trafficsafetystore.com and select organic keywords. Full disclaimer, I don't work with any of these companies. Next, I would drop in my competitor, Traffic Safety Warehouse, and select paid keywords from the drop down. Then click compare. And what I like to do as well is set a volume threshold. So in this case, I might start with minimum 100 monthly searches. Now I can scroll down just like with the previous examples, select the missing tab here. And now I can see a short list of all of the keywords that Traffic Safety Warehouse is currently bidding on that trafficsafetystore.com has no existing organic rankings for. So I can see terms like solar floodlights, concrete curbing, driveway markers, high-vis vests, high-vis hoodies, high-vis clothing. This might be a new category that I could potentially build out on my site. I would just go through and check any items and add them to my keyword manager. And a little bonus tip here, if you want to get an idea around which keywords may be converting the best for a competitor, you can use SEMrush's advertising research report here in the advertising toolkit and come over to the ad history tab. And in here, you're going to get a quick look and see at which terms they've been bidding on for the longest period of time. And the idea here is if a, if a competitor has been bidding on a term for a long extended period of time, you can reasonably infer with some level of confidence that this term is driving quality traffic, leads and or sales to that business. So if I scroll down, I can quickly see, in this case, Traffic Safety Warehouse has been bidding on the term Jersey Barrier, Bollard Fencing, Orange Cones, and those types of terms for consecutive months, at least six months in a row. And the fact that they haven't paused their spend is a good indicator that maybe it's a really solid high converting term that I might wanna prioritize in my short list of commercial intent keyword opportunities. So just another lens that you might wanna look through when it comes to prioritizing which keywords you move into the content calendar first. The fifth strategy that we're gonna look at now is uncovering all of your competitors' secondary keywords. And basically outside of your primary topic, these are all those additional keywords or queries that can drive traffic to your site. And typically the more secondary keywords that your article is able to rank for, the more traffic you can get from a single piece of content. And just to show you what this can look like, if we're over here looking at Beard Brand again, and we navigate to the pages report, and we scroll down, we can see here that they have several articles on their site that are ranking for, in some cases, 2000 different keywords. And some of these assets are driving tens of thousands of visits to the site each month. A good example is this beard brand beard styles article ranks for two and a half thousand keywords and brings in over 30,000 visits to the site each month. So a big topic for them. So all you need to do is click on the keywords link and it'll bring you to a report here where you can actually start to analyze and see which specific keywords or topics this article is ranking for. And one thing I like to do when it comes to building out a new piece of content when I'm analyzing the secondary keywords of competitors is to just filter out those keywords that are ranking in the top 10 or maybe 20 positions as these are going to give you a stronger indicator of what Google sees a single article as being able to rank for on the first page. And these are the first set that you're going to want to look at when it comes to optimizing the on-page elements on that asset. And also too, looking through this list, it gives you a good idea about specific sections that you might want to cover within a guide or a resource to make it more comprehensive and have a better chance of ranking for all those different keywords. Looking at an example here, we can see that Beardaholic also has has this Beard Styles article. But if we have a look at their asset, there you can see theirs is ranking for about 1600 keywords and bringing in 1300 organic visits a month, which is about just over a third of what Beard Brand was bringing in. So there's an opportunity here for these guys to go ahead and potentially bolster their article with secondary keywords. And the easiest way to do that is just to come over here into the Keyword Gap Analysis tool inside SEMrush. And here you wanna enter in your exact URL if you already have an existing piece of content. And
and then drop in your competitor right next to it. Make sure organic keywords are selected and then hit compare. The next thing I like to do again is just add that competitors in the top 10 position filter. And then I come down and I click this missing tab and I can see now 315 secondary keywords that Beer Brand has ranking in the top 10 position that Beardaholics article is currently not ranking with. You're specifically looking for opportunities about different keyword variations that you might be able to sprinkle into the body copy, maybe reposition a few of the existing headings. But one big opportunity here is to try and look for keywords that may be good topics to target in added new sections within a piece of content. So for these guys, maybe their article doesn't have a section on long beard styles or full beard styles, mustache and beard styles, goatee beard styles. These may be all dedicated subsections within that broader beard styles pillar asset that they could be targeting in order to expand the keyword footprint of their asset and ultimately get more organic traffic from it. Okay, there you have it. Five super actionable ways you can mine your competitors to find hundreds or maybe thousands of high value keyword opportunities across each stage of the funnel. And if you like this video, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get notified when I release new SEO case studies and tutorials. And if you want to go a little bit deeper and learn more advanced SEO processes to scale your organic traffic and conversions, check out the link below in the description for my training program, the SEO Playbook. See you in the next video.